Atheist Nomads, episode 140, news for March 31, 2016. The podcast you're about to listen to includes cursing and talking about hoo-hahs. Please be advised. We are the Atheist Nomads, bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. Ow, my back hurts. Ah, oh, that sucks. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I've been really busy at work and really busy outside of work, and uh, I'm I'm tired and and stressed and uh yeah and me fucking around with you probably wasn't helping either no (laughs) no (laughs) trying not to laugh yeah uh a little bit of that potentially which uh you weren't helping with figuring out was uh how much of me playing around with the new equipment and settings and everything on it is uh impacting things so i will get to have some fun doing some some troubleshooting uh later well, to be fair, I might be a little bit high or just on narcotics. Yeah. Yeah. Yay, hydrocodone. So, this should be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't usually drink during shows. That's Dustin's purview. Mm-hmm. Is- we, we, we tried the you drinking thing on our second episode. <laughs> it didn't go very well. And then we re- recorded with a different second episode. Yeah. 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 But there is a lost first second episode somewhere yeah i I, i'm actually not sure if i still have the (laughs) the uh the audio of that yeah i don't blame you (laughs) oh it was it was bad it was horrible bad very horrible (laughs) oh boy all right well uh our next news episode will be in tacoma Uh uh-oh live Uh (laughs) uh-oh On April 9. April 9. Wow. Do we have a venue? No. Not really. I tried asking a couple bars. They're like, eh. Okay. Well, watch Facebook and Twitter. Uh, <laughs> if you're in uh, the, the Puget Sound region, uh, yeah, we will be recording somewhere. Uh, worst case scenario, it will be without the bar's knowledge or permission, and it might get noisy. <laughs> yeah so yeah time and and location will be our our tbd well anyway um wesley i i understand you won something over the weekend uh, you could say so i caucused hard i bet um, i caucused harder did you uh-huh man how long did you spend caucusing at least an hour and a half oh because in boise we caucus hardcore there was 10,000 of us line stretching like a mile and uh I I I was caucusing from 4:30 to 11:30. That doesn't sound fun. It wasn't. <laughs> it was a complete clusterfuck. Oh god, ours was easy comparatively. Yeah, I mean, well, Ada County had the largest caucus in the history of caucuses for Idaho? No. The largest caucus ever. Huh. Okay. Nobody else other than Idaho and maybe one or two other stupid states are stupid enough <laughs> to do county caucuses. Right. So you don't do like districts or precincts. No, we had 9,100 people cast ballots the first round. No. They didn't even get to close the doors until 930. No, because everybody who was in line by seven uh, got to take part. Sure. Thousands of people didn't join in because they saw how long the line ran. CNN, Anderson Cooper covered how long of a line we had in Boise. (laughs) We filled CenturyLink Arena and the Boise Center downtown. I was wondering where anything that was I didn't think anything could be big enough in Boise to fit everybody. Uh, the there, there there's two venues that that are are bigger. Uh, the fairgrounds 
and Bronco Stadium. Bron- Bronco Stadium for Boise State Broncos, their football stadium. Uh, uh, those could have handled it, but oh, it was it was insane. <laughs> that oh. was some stupid shit. Yeah. So basically, Idaho depends on people not voting. Well. So this is the system they've had for a long time since Democrats lost power decades ago when, they, when you know, all the racists moved over to the uh, Republican Party. And I'm not saying that all Republicans are racist, but pretty much all racists are Republican at this point. Yeah, that's kind of funny. So they do county caucuses. And uh, in 2004, there was 5,000 people across the state who caucused. Good God. So, realistically, if the numbers were similar, it would have been 2,000 people in Boise. In 2008, there was 21,000 people total. And this year, there was 24,000. <laughs> the Democratic Party in Idaho doesn't even run ca- uh, candidates everywhere. Sure. No. Why bother? Yeah. You know, like, just, like, Boise and, what, uh, Coeur d'Alene? Yeah. And at Lewiston, Lewiston, um, hmm. Moscow. Uh, there, there's a couple places where, where Democrats can do okay. I've heard of Moscow. Uh, home of uh, University of Idaho. Hmm. It is uh, like the party school of the Northwest. Hmm. Bold claim, sir. It's Bold a, a claim. It's just across the river from from uh, Washington State. And right. okay, those two are the combo party schools of the Northwest. Well, I still bet the Evergreen College down in Olympia smokes more weed. Probably. 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 So anyway, they yeah. They I don't have, even give grades. I spent a long time in, in a, a terrible idea of a, a caucus. You you spent an hour and a half um, yeah. having meaningful uh, interactions with the Democratic, well, the least Democratic part of our Democratic process. <laughs> well, to be honest... Uh, there was like four or five people with clipboards when I showed up outside helping direct people around. And after that, I didn't see a single one of those fuckers. <laughs> uh, wow. There was one lady with a microphone at the beginning that re- read off like the general rules. And then she fucked off to uh, like, I don't know. Hmm. But um, every dist well, every uh, precinct in our district was supposed to have a uh, precinct chair for the caucus. Uh, somebody to lead us okay (laughs) my precinct didn't have one so i was like well fuck it and me and this lady stood up and like oh we'll we'll both do it and then yeah she was you know she seemed pretty cool but we gave like 15 second little speeches and they voted for me to do it so i still enlisted her help because she she ended up you know like a solid help anyways uh we had 64 people in my precinct, all 64, and wow. nine of them went for, for Hillary, which put us just over half of one of our four delegates um, <laughs> went towards Hillary. So, yeah, uh, we had three delegates for Bernie, one for Hills, and uh, then we had to vote on who would be a delegate, and me and Lauren, well, this Lauren, yeah, not your yeah. Lauren, uh, obviously, and one other lady. We we all became uh, primary delegates for for Bernie Sanders, and then oh, nice, some, some weird white thirty year old guy, kind of pudgy, became the delegate for Hillary. <laughs> okay, kinda, yeah, kind of odd, but anyways, yeah, um, hooray! I'm a delegate for Bernie. All right, well, um. We do have the YouTube channel. Uh, it's been kind of hit or miss as to how many people actually um, bother sitting through an episode there. Oh, God. Uh, so numbers ranging from single digits to... I've seen upper double digits. Wow. Yeah. So are, people... Are we talking like almost 20? Uh, 76 was the highest. Holy shit. Yeah. Um. Fucking surprising. Yeah. So, uh, people on uh, of of YouTube who are are hearing hearing me now, um, since you can't actually see me now because of issues. So, YouTube uh, people, uh, do you uh, is it worth us worth it for us to keep doing putting up episodes on YouTube, or could you just as easily 
uh, subscribe as to this as a podcast. If one, if any of you answer, it would be appreciated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if anyone answers on YouTube, I guarantee we will continue doing stuff on YouTube. There you go. If nobody does, um, I, I make no guarantees. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, it's time to uh, dust off the degree. And this time I actually used one of my uh, old textbooks. Holy so, shit. Yeah. It's, it's, and I, oh, I'm so glad I remembered this book because <laughs> it's the Concise Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church. What? Yeah. If I. It's the Oxford Dic- Dictionary for the Church. Uh huh. Okay. I'm just Oxford go with this. started out as a seminary and still has a seminary. And so it makes sense they'd have books like that. Some of the, the best uh, Bible bindings come from Oxford Press. Uh, but anyway, the uh, yeah, if, if I'm ever at a, for a loss on topics, all I have to do is open up that book and randomly pick a page. And there's <laughs> like 20, well, anywhere from 5 to 20 topics. There you go. Yeah. So anyway, as we are, we, we have been continuing into the nature of, of, the God of the monotheistic faiths, and in particular, um, the Christians. Uh, we previously covered how the Jewish God was split into two, and then the Christian God was split into three, which when you add in, you know, the earlier split basically brings you up to four gods, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and Satan. Well, now we're going to see how that number grew to a pantheon rivaling the Hindus. And to be fair, these new additions aren't viewed as gods, but they are certainly demigods in the the roles they actually play. They have the power to work miracles, influence world events, affect the weather, they can change the tide in a war, and they certainly have as much power as many of the gods of the polytheistic pantheons. Who is it we're talking about? Well, the saints. In the 1st and 2nd century CE, the uh, Christian church was getting persecuted a lot. Um, you know, early on, they weren't really getting persecuted because nobody gave a fuck about them. And then they got big enough that it was putting a dent into how many people were worshiping Caesar and, and the Roman gods. So, you know, they started getting some some persecution. Uh, in some cases, they were being persecuted for being thought of as Jews <laughs> when it was going to be popular to, to persecute Jews. And eventually that did help contribute to changing their day of worship from Saturday to Sunday mm-hmm. to more distinguish themselves from you know, Jews who worship on, on Saturday. And there, by the second century, a uh, kind of a cult of the martyrs started up. So if you died for your faith, you would be remembered by the local community. Uh, they would start uh, not just remembering them, but holding them in very high regard post-death. As the concept of an immortal soul and immediately going to heaven developed, it even started to be viewed as martyrs who were up in heaven, and because they died for their faith, they would have a, a special, you know, special uh, uh, um, access to the ear of God. And so maybe you could talk to them, and then they would, uh, you know, talk to God on your behalf. Mm. Uh, around this time, uh, relics of, of martyrs were also starting to become a thing in churches and services. So, and in some cases, people would pray on these relics and the relics would range anywhere from something the person had owned to a piece of their corpse. A lot of relics are bones of martyrs and, and saints. And so this, uh, this continued and it grew, but generally speaking, the martyrs were all local. Um, So it would be the local congregation or local region that would be kind of venerating these these individuals. By the 4th century, it had expanded to virgins and confessors. So people who were viewed as very, very godly people. And in the case of the virgins, these would be the the forerunners of the nuns. Not N-O-N-E-S like we are, but N-U-N-S, nuns. Uh, By the 8th century... It is there is documented evidence that masses started to be celebrated in honor of the saints. So you would have a certain Sunday where the service would be, um, and not necessarily the service, but the, the Eucharist itself would be 
um, done in the honor of this particular uh, saint. Usually martyrs, virgins, confessors, and uh, other really high people. But it was still a very much a local thing. It was usually the local bishop was the one who got to decide who would get these. And most of the time it was the people wanted it. And the bishop would just kind of slow them down a little bit before they'd get what they wanted. And so that that continued to grow. And by that point, it was becoming quite the big thing. Uh, enough that eventually we had to have an All Saints Day so you could have a mass in honor of all the saints because there weren't any days left in the calendar. <laughs> and eventually there were so many uh, saint days that Jesus was starting to get forgotten about. <laughs> so they had to create Christmas and Easter as times to celebrate Christ since the Sunday service was no longer for that purpose. And then by the 12th century, uh, there were so many saints that the Pope finally ruled that only the Pope could decide. Now, of course, that only applied for the Roman Catholic Church, the Eastern Church. Um, they developed a kind of similar centralized control process, but it was in the, the determinations were made by synods of bishops. So a bunch of bishops get together and they vote as to whether or not somebody qualifies to be a saint. It's now a very uh, structured process where there are, you know, departments at the Vatican whose job is to, you know, evaluate whether or not people are worthy. They have to be beatified before they can be canonized. And beatification is saying that, yes, this person has performed a miracle post-death. They are a candidate for sainthood. And then if they have a second confirmed miracle, uh, then they get to actually become saints. They get canonized. And we're at the point now where there are more than 10,000 saints. Huh. Uh, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, thousands upon thousands of people. Uh, they're, they're, and th th a lot of them are, are patron saints of something. Hmm. There's like uh, uh, St. Nicholas. He is the patron saint of lost causes, prostitutes, and a bunch of other things. That's how many patron saints there are. Yeah, I kind of wonder who the patron saint of you know, like premature ejaculation is. And if he's not around yet, I'm sure he's coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, man, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's crazy. Uh, Protestants, of course, have, have abandoned the saints, um, viewed them as being as well. They should polytheistic almost because, mm -hmm. well, yeah, it kind of is. It's, it's just weird. And the whole Catholic Mary worship is weird. Oh, that's next time. Oh yeah. I got All to right. see some fun stuff on that in Mexico. All right. Throw forward. Yeah. Mm hmm. All right, so on that note, we'll take our first break, and then we'll be back with history. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low-price, full-featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A-R-C-H-W-A-Y hosting.com. Hey, we're also brought to you by listeners just like you. Find out how you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Atheist Nomads. That's P A T R E O N dot com forward slash Atheist Nomads. Oh boy, this day in history, March 31st, starting with the well, rather famous year of 1492 and you know, Columbus and all that. Uh, um, let's start with this one the Alhambra Decree, uh, also known as the Edict of Expulsion. Yeah. Uh, so this one's interesting. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, put out by a joint Catholic monarch of, uh, Spain. That's Isabella, the first of Castilla and, uh, Ferdinand, the second of Aragon. Yeah. So basically they, uh, ordered the expulsion of practicing Jews from the kingdoms of uh, Castilla and Aragon and its territories and possessions by the 31st of July of that year. Uh, 
basically primary purpose of, of that was to eliminate their influence on Spain's larger uh, converso population and ensure that they did not revert back to Judaism. Uh, I just think this is kind of funny, but uh, yeah, well, not really funny, haha. But anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah, over half of G- uh, Spain's Jews had converted as a result of the uh, religious persecution and, and pogroms, which occurred in 1391, and as such were not subject to the decree or uh, to expulsion. So, yeah, <laughs> a further number of those remaining chose to avoid expulsion as a re- result of the edict and as a result of the Alhambra decree and persecution in prior years, over 200,000 Jews converted to Catholicism, and between 60 to 100,000 people were expelled. Wow. (laughs) So, yeah. um, Convert, get kicked out, or I'm assuming uh, die or prison if you're lucky. Well, this was the, the, the era of the Spanish Inquisition, and the Reconquista. Uh, it, it was 1492 was when the last of the Muslim-controlled portions of Spain were reconquered. And Jews had enjoyed a pretty decent life under the, the Moors. Uh, these well, Catholics wait, took over. Basically, and, they just had a tax on them, right? Yeah. If you weren't Muslim or a Moor, you, uh-huh. you got taxed. And just you were just left alone. Yeah, the the early uh, Christian leaders in in Spain at that point had kind of continued that taxation approach until <laughs> they finally decided, nope, nope, that's not good enough. They all need to leave. And uh, you know who welcomed them in? Poland. Oh. Which then had a golden age. Hmm. Okay, well, that yeah. explains why there's a lot of uh, Polish Jews. Well, were. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. World War II and all that. Yeah, Poland had enjoyed a a very, uh, you know, it it became one of the dominant powers in in at least Central and Eastern Europe for quite a while after that. Uh, A large part of that was the Jews that took a lot of their money with them, and they moved to Poland and started up businesses. (laughs) You know what I I kind of found find a little, little funny? is that the edict wasn't formally revoked until uh, December 68 uh, as part of uh, Vatican II Council. Yeah. So it took a few hundred years for them to say, well, we're not doing that anymore. Well, especially since they'd already been allowing Jews to openly practice their religion and have synagogues. <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of those weird and fucked up laws that, you know, all across the country and world, I'm sure that, you know, somebody enacted as a joke or it's all it were like this case in all seriousness. And then people just like, yeah, forgot about it or just mm-hmm. let it be. And yeah, <laughs> those laws, like you can't cross a street holding a baked potato kind of weird shit. <laughs> that's out there. But, uh, or you can't give your uh, beloved a box of chocolates. That's less than a pound. Really? That's in Idaho. There you go. Not enforced, but it's on the books. Wow. So you just basically can't be a cheap bastard in Idaho. Yeah. Yeah. Has to be a pound or more. All right. I would be, I would be surprised if C's chocolates wasn't involved in making that law somewhere. (laughs) Probably. Moving on along. This day in the year 1776. And if that, Year sounds familiar to Americans. Well, there's a reason for that. Yeah. So on this day, a uh, future first lady, Abigail Adams, right. I uh, was writing to her husband, urging him to quote unquote, remember the ladies and not in that fun, happy, playful kind of way. But, uh, yeah. When drafting the new code of laws for their fledging nation, man. So John Adams, you might recall participated in the uh, Continental Congress in Philadelphia. Uh, his wife, Abigail, of course, well, remained at their house in Braintree, Massachusetts. Yes. Um, doing the, the standard, you know, you know, whatever you did back then to take care of a house. Yeah. <laughs> Tell the servants what to do. Yeah, pretty much. I'm sure they're rich, or at least well off. 
Yeah, yeah, Anyways, they were for sure. Abigail uh, definitely well learned, at least for the time. She was definitely a prolific writer, and she never hesitated to uh, debate her husband on uh, political matters. And she begged Adams to draft laws that were quote more generous and favorable unquote to women than his predecessors had. She half jokingly claimed that quote all men would be tyrants if they could. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pointed out the glaring hypocrisy of male patriots fighting against British tyranny if they should disregard if they should disregard the rights of half of the population when drafting the Constitution. Man, I like this lady already. But uh, Avangel warned, uh, "quote If particular care and attention is not paid to the ladies, we are determined to foment a rebellion and will not hold ourselves bound by any laws which we have no voice or representation." <laughs> fucking a and yeah adams <laughs> unfortunately john adams was kind of a dick and you know it i'm sure it was choking but uh you know he's saying that man men were not really the masters of women but were subject to the despotism of the petticoat <laughs> yeah um Unfortunately, it wasn't until 1919, of course, that Congress amended the Constitution and granted women the right to vote. But, man, you know, that's a, so late. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that's almost 150 years earlier that this lady is like really just has some amazing thoughts that I, I, why do I disregard half your nation? Fucking A. Mm hmm. Man, you go, Abigail. Damn right. Mm. So, yeah, uh, look this lady up. I'm sure she's got a, a somebody published a, a book of her letters, I'm sure, by now. Oh, definitely. So, moving along, I got a couple, I got a couple mentions. Oh, okay. Uh, so, starting with this one, um, 1998 is the year. Which uh, is the, uh, on this day in 1998, Mozilla uh, released its uh, open source software. Basically, nice. um, the open source version of Netscape Communicator. And thus began, th thus began the uh, Mozilla project. Oh, very awesome. And I should backtrack for a second. Um, oh, crap. Wait, so Mozilla is 18 years old. Oh, it's old enough yeah. to vote now. And other things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, backtracking a second, because I really wanted this one in here. Uh, the year, 1985. The date, of course, March 31st. The first WrestleMania! The biggest wrestling event from the WWE, which was then the WWF, World Wrestling Federation, takes place in Madison Square Garden in New York. All right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Fucking A. And uh, fake wrestling never looks so good. <laughs> mm, all those guys greased up. Yeah. Anyways, that's what I got. All right. We'll take another break, and we'll be back with science. We love hearing from our listeners. You can email us at contact at atheistnomads.com, tweet us at atheistnomads, send us a message on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash atheistnomads, or better yet, call us and leave us a message at 541-203-0666. We might even play it on the show. You can also help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcast directory of choice. Convergent evolution is always a very cool thing where one feature comes about multiple times. And there's, there's lots of examples of this. Vision has numerous cases of, of convergent evolution. A uh, really cool example is eyes, where birds are tetrachromatic, tetra, yeah, four, uh, four uh, color receptors. Um, there are a lot of fish that are tetrachromatic, and possibly some humans. Uh but one of the uh, really cool ones is fish with tetrapod-like characteristics, including the blind cavefish Cryptotora thalamicola. 
which walks and climbs waterfalls with a almost a pelvis and it walks using uh, diagonal couplets and a lateral sequence like a salamander. And it does this, um, yeah, using a, a pelvic girdle that looks like something you'd find on a, a terrestrial vertebrate. And in pretty much all other fish, the pelvic bones are suspended in a muscular sling or just loosely attached to the pectoral girdle. Whereas this one is a large, broad plate that is joined to the iliac process and it allows them to, to walk. And uh, this is found in Thailand. Oh, fucking Thailand, of course. Uh, seriously, though, I mean, that's pretty damn cool. And we, we might have competition in a couple million years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. For If we're going for right. competition for a emerging tetrapod uh, a few hundred million years. Okay, still. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure in that time we'll have perfected the ability to gene gear. That's what I'm calling it, gene engineering. Mm. Uh, and we can help uplift these fishes. Perhaps, perhaps. Uh, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm totally ripping this off of David Bren. So. so what was interesting with this article is I, I first saw it and was like, oh, that's really cool. But the article I was reading was from some site out of Maine, and it was terrible. I mean, a terrible article. You couldn't <laughs> quite figure out what was going on, and the grammar was bad enough to make it difficult to follow. <laughs> Like, wrong word choices where the correct word wasn't necessarily clear. And, like, I, I'm okay with bad grammar unless it makes it more difficult to understand. And that one definitely did. So, it was like, okay, where else can I find this? More stuff from New England that was all written just as bad. And it was like, okay, this is a story that's starting to look kind of just like some kind of random-ass uh, terrible clickbait. And then I finally found it in nature with the actual article. So, yeah, the abstract is also difficult to read, but for technical reasons. Yeah. Saying that you're not technical? I'm saying I'm not a scientist, so I can't always... Uh, the the, uh, the language used in, in scientific papers can uh, sometimes uh, be a little difficult for me to follow. Oh, for shame, for shame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And for our other science story, uh, the Siberian unicorn was thought to have become extinct 350,000 years ago. It had a large territory um, from the eastern area of modern Kazakhstan um, all the way out across the western Siberian plain. And it was a uh, rhinoceros. Well, they recently found it. Um, with a example from Kazakhstan, uh, 29,000 years old. Oh. This is a, a much newer example. And uh, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty cool. Moved it way, way up to being more recent and overlapping with modern humans. Hmm. Yeah. Well, 30,000 years isn't that old. No, uh, it's not. Compared to 350,000 years is is that even enough to be fossilized? Um, somewhat. Hmm. I wonder if they could find actual DNA off of it. There would probably still be some. <laughs> uh, very poor DNA. Yeah. But. Well, whatever it is, you can, you know, just breed it with a chicken. That always works. <laughs> that works for dinosaurs. <laughs> since chickens are just little delicious dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to see a, I want to see a chicken with a fat fucking rhino hit horn on it <laughs> i am having a hard time imagining that because you need the dinosaur snout first oh well, i'm not saying that it would walk i'm just saying it would be there <laughs> <laughs> oh oh wesley yay drugs <laughs> all right we're gonna take another break and we'll be back <laughs> with politics and religion as a listener of the show, I'm going to assume you love my sexy vocal stylings. If you love the rest of the show as much as my voice, consider giving us the resources we desperately need to purchase quality cocaine and Red Bull. 
We make it super easy to make a one-time donation or to support us on a per-episode, monthly, or even annual basis using PayPal or Patreon. Find out more at AtheistNomads.com. Use the links on the right side of the page. A dollar an episode is all we ask. And we're back. Yeah. So we are uh, hopefully going to be able to shortly wind up the state legislative update. Mm. Because well, at least some states like Idaho are already done. But there is still some crazy ass stuff coming out. So Indiana has passed a new law, which according to Governor Mike Pence, the bill which he has signed said, and I quote, it will ensure the dignified final treatment of the unborn and prohibits abortions that are based only on the unborn child's sex, race, color, national origin, ancestry, or disability, including Down syndrome. Wow. Some of my most precious moments as governor have been with families of children with disabilities, especially those raising children with Down syndrome. In response, Bernie Sanders tweeted, the decision to have an abortion is for a woman to make, not the governor of Indiana. <laughs> Fucking A. This is actually currently one of the most restrictive abortion laws. And so if, if your kid is being formed in, in your stomach and has no arms and no legs, still got to have it. Mm -hmm. If your kid has down syndrome or I forget what it, what it's called when you don't have some or most of your brain, you still have to microencephalopathy. Yes. You still yeah. have to go through with this. Yep. Right. So basically if you don't want the kid too bad, you're fucked. It's if you don't want the kid, you're fine. Unless you don't want the kid for a reason. Right. So you just walk in there and say, I want an abortion and don't give a reason. Yep. But you know what this is going to, well, this is one of those bills that is really stupid because any doctor who would not want to perform an abortion wouldn't be performing abortions. And any doctor who performs abortions wouldn't, be likely to ask why. And I'm pretty sure it's already that way as it is. Uh-huh. This I'm is pretty sure that no, no doctor is being forced to perform abortions. Mm-hmm. And okay. yes, selective abortions are becoming, Vogue. I don't know if they're becoming more popular here at least, but there's greater potential. You know, we have laboratory tests available that are, are commonly performed to check for things like Down syndrome and we have ultrasounds that can pick up on a lot of disabilities. The whole ancestry, national origin, race, color, that part seems odd because what you decided after the fact that you didn't want to fuck somebody of the, of a different race. Well, you know, maybe it's one of those things that doesn't really show on the outside. You're like, you know, I didn't know that, uh, the Joshy over there was a Jew until after, you know, he fucked. So I don't know. Don't it just seems, kids. it just seems weird. I mean, just weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It really just seems like a case of, well, what it is, is just a case of trying to make it more difficult to have an abortion. And, ah, oh, it's just weird. I'm honestly surprised that they didn't toss religion into that list. <laughs> I mean, they toss it into every other list. That's for uh, making sure that people don't have to perform them, which the only case where that would even remotely come up is when it's medically necessary. And even then, nobody would force someone to perform a surgery. So it's restrictions that when you have vague restrictions like this, or let me rephrase that. When you have very specific restrictions that do not just have like time frames written into them, they have no teeth. This one in particular, if the abortion is only because of one of those reasons, you can't have it. <laughs> well, what if the abortion is because the fetus has a terrible genetic defect and you just decided you don't want to have that baby? Okay. It's Friday. I don't feel like having uh -huh. a kid. Fuck it. Abortion. All right. That's allowed. I, I could easily imagine a scenario where 
a woman would go in, already has three kids, can't handle, well, could handle that fourth one, but not now, not with that new information. And all right, yeah, I can't handle having a fourth kid right now. Done. Okay. Ah, it's just crazy. It's just some fucking stupid word games. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's just a semantic thing. I'm like, fuck you, Mike Pence. I mean, this is just the latest reason to say that, but fuck you. Yeah. Uh, So let's go ahead and move on to another state. Uh, Georgia. Hmm. The Georgia legislature passed a religious freedom bill that would allow anyone with a religiously based organization, whatever the hell that means, to follow its religious beliefs and refuse employment uh, or services to anyone who doesn't fit with their beliefs. And especially since the bill specifically mentioned weddings, everyone knows that it was just about letting people discriminate against gays and lesbians. And in response, the following companies spoke out against the bill and many threatened to boycott the state. Right. Viacom, 21st Century Fox, Lionsgate, CBS, Stars, AMC, Netflix, Time Warner, Sony, Comcast, NBC Universal, MGM, Disney, Coca Cola, The Home Ooh. Depot, the NFL, the NCAA, Apple, Intel, and Salesforce. Okay, hold up. Coca Cola? I mean, Coca Cola. Who, who is based out of Georgia? Yeah. Based out of Atlanta, Georgia. They have a fucking like, theme park. Home Depot is based out of Georgia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is big. AMC was threatening to pull the, the, rec- the filming of The Walking Dead out of Georgia. Huh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that show's been way too Southern. It's time to move that shit up North. Or something. <laughs> this, Anyways, this even caused some major multi-million dollar development deals to fall through. Wow. Nice. Now, of course, with millions already lost and billions more on the line, the governor vetoed it on Monday. (laughs) Well, (laughs) he knows where his bread's buttered. Come on. (laughs) Of course, now the legislature is trying to figure out whether or not they can override his veto. Right. Well, I'm betting some of those motherfuckers in the legislature have... Oh, some of these businesses in their districts. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll start feeling the pressure pretty soon, too. Well, okay. Who doesn't have a Home Depot in their district? Who doesn't have a fucking Coca Cola vending machine in their district? <laughs> Even better point, especially in the South, where you oh, don't okay. get pop or soda, you get Coke. Yeah, yeah. Even and, if it's Pepsi. <laughs> yeah. Uh, come on. I mean, and don't fuck with people's TV. I mean, Walking Dead is still kind of popular. Oh, TV and movies. It was like every <laughs> major studio was on that list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's go ahead and move north a little bit. North Carolina. Hmm. Last month, the city of Charlotte passed a non-discrimination ordinance, which prompted a bill. They got rushed through the state legislature in one day during a special session called just to deal with this crisis of non-discrimination rules being in place in the state. Oh, you can't have that. (laughs) They rushed through a bill to prevent local governments from having any ordinances like that vile one in Charlotte. Oh, so horrible. Of course, they went ahead and took it further than just prohibiting local governments from doing that. And it also ruled that transgender people must use restrooms in government buildings, including schools, that match the sex listed on their birth certificates. Definitely. Because, you know, of course, you have to protect women from predatory men in dresses. Said nobody ever, for reals. Said them. For reals. But, yeah, when you look at it, you are, there is a greater chance of a, well, A, a Republican, elected Republican politician getting caught doing something inappropriate in a bathroom (laughs) than a transgender person. Yeah, don't tap that toe on the floor. And if anybody is going to get assaulted in a restroom because a transgender person is there, it's the trans person. It's the trans woman that's in a men's restroom. That's who's at risk of getting assaulted. Not somebody who just wants to pee. 
Fucking hell. Mm. Now that this has been signed into law. Well, I got to add that there's this awesome picture that I have to share with you. Uh, it's from uh, at Pat MC McCrary NC. So I will share a picture that you just really need to add in with show notes. Okay. Uh, so anyway, now that it's been signed into law, the ACLU has already filed suit in federal court trying to make sure this cannot be enforced since it violates Title IX of the Civil Rights Act. And the Attorney General of North Carolina has come out and said that it's unconstitutional. He will not defend it. He's also running for governor against the current governor. Mm -hmm. So if you're in North Carolina, you know who to vote for. (laughs) Yeah, I've, I've seen that picture. Great picture. It belongs there. Yep. I mean... That is the ultimate takedown in 140 characters or less. Damn right. Well, (laughs) picture's worth a thousand words. (laughs) Yeah. So Idaho's bill that would allow the Bible as a reference text in schools that we have been following has passed the state house. There was an effort in the house to remove the word Bible to avoid the bill violating the state constitution, which is far stronger in its prohibition of church state blurred lines than the u.s constitution and it has a section talking about education that says that no books papers tracts, or documents of a political sectarian or denominational character shall be used in public schools representative fred wood republican of burley fears that it could cost taxpayers as much as four hundred thousand dollars and said I just want my constituents to know back home. This is not a vote against religion or the Bible or anything else. What this is a vote against is needlessly wasting taxpayers' dollars. Okay, of course, no one needs to worry about these issues because as Representative Sage Dixon, Republican of Pondroy, puts it, the little Supreme Court in my head says this is okay. And he said that from the floor of the Idaho State House of Representatives. (laughs) Oh, man. He's got a whole bunch of Scalia between his ears. You know, if the little Supreme Scalia's Court. fat. <laughs> and with this one, it doesn't even matter which Supreme Court you're talking about. Yeah, it has a better chance of passing the U.S. Supreme Court than it does the Idaho Supreme Court. Mm. And but neither of them should be saying this is OK. Yeah, no. <laughs> Unfortunately, I. Uh, Governor Little Bitch Otter has uh, demonstrated several times that he is more than happy to waste hundreds of thousands of dollars of taxpayer money to defend unconstitutional laws in the courts. His attorney general has said that this bill is unconstitutional and advised the the legislature to not pass it. Did you say Bitch Otter? Yeah, that's his nickname. Okay. Yeah. I, I was just having a little internal laugh until then. Little Bitch Otter is his nickname. There's actually a local beer, uh, an IPA called uh, Little Bitch Otter. Nice. Man, standing up against the man. I like it. Three term governor, Oof. former son in law of, of the, uh, the now deceased patriarch of Simplot. Mm. Doesn't sound good. No, 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 no. And, uh, and actually, what everybody tells you who actually has met him yeah. and his wife, yeah. he's not running the state. Oh, really? Yeah. He's not that bright. <laughs> well, any, well, two things that you know about anybody that is named Butch. One, they're not too bright. <laughs> two, they were the school bully. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. Well, moving on along. Hmm. Last week, three suicide bombers killed at least 31 people and wounded more than 300 more in Brussels. The Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attack, and the specific targets were the Brussels airport and a train station near the EU and NATO headquarters. This is a terrible, horrible thing that should have never happened. Uh, Terrorism, for any reason, is bad. And terrorism in the name of Islam is Definitely bad. Responding the way the right wing in our country has responded 
uh, will only make it worse. Oh yeah. They've oh. with within minutes, they were yeah. already calling to, for us to be the world police and we should go over there and yeah. what the fuck? Let Belgium handle their own shit for for the first thing. If they want help, they'll fucking ask for it. Well, and the the targets, you know, like like I mentioned, the the Brussels airport. So you know, airports are they're always high profile targets. But that train station right by EU and NATO headquarters. Mm. That wasn't just an attack on Brussels. That was a, an attack on the EU and on NATO. And oh man, it's. It sucks. Well, anyway, in response, Donald Trump used it as an opportunity to say that he was right about the need to ban Muslim immigration. Ted Cruz joined in with calling for at least limiting the number of refugees coming in from countries with significant Al Qaeda or ISIS presence. In other words, those who have the greatest need for asylum. But Cruz even went further than that and called for increased patrols of Muslim neighborhoods. Increased patrols of Muslim neighborhoods. That is the stupidest thing I have ever heard. We have not had a single case that I'm aware of, of refugee Muslims in particular, doing anything other than being good law-abiding citizens. I think the worst they'll do is start restaurants with delicious food. I mean, come on. This is insane. Mm. I live not too far from Boise's Muslim neighborhood, or one of them. There's no reason for patrols there. Mostly when you see them, they are, it's mothers walking their children home from school. That's not a threat. That's just somebody trying to... That's just a family trying to live their lives in peace outside away from a war zone. They're not trying to bring warfare here. God damn. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, if we just let people live their lives, they'd be a lot less likely to attack us. Just yeah. Putting that out there. Yeah. Yeah. And the whole, uh, ISIS mess, if you want to try and, and pin fingers on it, I, I would, wouldn't blame, you can't blame any one action because that's always a gross oversimplification. Uh, it was probably far more accurate is that you had a volatile situation and Western meddling has just stirred the pot every single time. And if you add agitation to volatile chemicals, they are a lot more likely to react explosively. And we need to stop doing that. Yeah, I do think we need to help undo some of the damage we have done, but we need to try to do it in such a way as to not do more damage. <laughs> and that's, I have no idea how we could do that. And apparently Michelle Bachman is still around. She now writes for the world net daily, excuse me, the world net daily. Oh, that lovely. Yeah. Lovely thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sure. Her her explanation for the Brussels bombing is that God sent it to humiliate Obama for ignoring the Jews and Israel. <laughs> yeah. That guy nothing, man. That, yeah. What? <laughs> Just let that sink in. Uh, what, 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 what's hilarious with this is, you know, God sent Katrina to punish the U.S. for the gays. Sure. His aim there was... You know, 2,000 miles off. Should have been going for San Francisco, not New Orleans. Obviously. And now, you know, had to humiliate Obama by by having, making ISIS attack Europe instead of even the U.S. Going with a much bigger target available and you know, way, way off. Yeah. Uh, apparently, if, if God is mad at you, Feel sorry for people on the other side of the world. Well, yeah, I, I never got that whole, you know, I'm pissed at Mr. X over here on the left, so I'm going to, you know, shit on Mr. Y over here on the right. Mm -hmm. What? Why? Yeah. It, and and why? apparently God's aim is even worse than that. <laughs> yeah. God might as well be like a blind guy in a tornado with a slingshot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, moving on back to uh, current political 
you know, presidential candidates. Uh, a anti-Trump pro Cruz super PAC ran an ad recently with a nude photo of Melania Trump mm. heavily in Utah, <laughs> right before the Utah caucus where Trump lost so bad. He didn't even get any delegates. Uh, Cruz destroyed Trump there. But it's not like Trump had much of a chance anyway. In recent polling in Utah, Bernie Sanders would destroy Trump in Utah. Bernie Sanders would pretty much destroy everybody in every state. <laughs> so in response to this, since you know, a, a super PAC that supports Cruz is obviously, res- you know, Ted Cruz is responsible. Uh, Trump threatened to spill the beans on Heidi Cruz. Yeah, I I want to know this dirt. I want to know if he even has dirt. Yeah, I'm sure he doesn't, but whatever. All he has to do is say a thing, and it must be true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he uh, retweeted a picture of Melania looking like a model, which well, she, she was. Is. Yeah. And with that right next to a very unflattering picture of Heidi, <laughs> uh, you can catch an unflattering picture of anyone at some point uh Except shortly, meredith my meredith she's so hot shortly after that the national Enquirer ran an article claiming that ted cruz has had five affairs the thought of anyone willing to have sex with ted cruz is ted cruz and, and his uh, adult diaper uh, mm. i mean he, uh, so trump has you heard it you heard it here first ted cruz wears adult diapers so so Trump has gone on the 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 offensive <laughs> relatively hardcore over the last week or so against you know Heidi enough that Cruz has had to respond with telling him to leave his wife alone and the media has called this the war of the wives because why not it sounds a whole lot more like Donald Trump being like my mom's better than your mom my mom's hotter than your mom you, your mom sucks your mom's ugly. <laughs> uh, what is it? They're continuing to act like it's middle school. This is a fucking presidential can- campaign. It's like the Superman versus Batman movie, which I've heard described as the uh, PG-13 orphan fight. <laughs> yeah, I think let that one soak in for a second. Uh, it's horrible. Don't see it. Anyways, um, Lauren liked it. Really? I wasn't that big of a fan. But she also usually decides if she likes a, is going to like a movie before she sees it. Okay. She had decided she would like this one. Okay. Fair enough. I wonder woman was the bright spot. She actually looked like she was enjoying being in the movie. The rest of it, me. Lauren thought that as well. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. Uh, she thought Wonder Woman was, was one of the bright spots. Uh, but she's also enough of a, a Marvel wrong universe Uh, she's enough of a dc comics fan that she uh she really liked some of the stuff that most people didn't get okay okay we'll have to talk about that sometime me and her because you guys be in town soon Mm mm-hmm yeah yep and uh glenn beck is an outspoken supporter of ted cruz but it's kind of unbelievable how deeply he supports this candidate let's hear it from him (laughs) <laughs> but then he says, but God has not revealed Ted Cruz as the divinely anointed alternative either. To you, Dr. Kidd, to you, to you, God hasn't revealed Cruz as divinely anointed. I understand that. And I respect your opinion on it. But here's mine. I have seen this man's life. I have watched this man. I have prayed about this man. I have prayed about it by myself, out loud, in quiet, with my family, with my staff. And I happen to believe that Ted Cruz actually was anointed for this time. Would there not be someone that was in the pool that might have the right qualifications for God? Is he that disinterested in all of us? Or is it perhaps possible that just like in the Bible... People were raised from birth for a specific time. Are we that inconsequential, Dr. Kidd? Are we really not important enough for him to raise someone up at this critical juncture? Oh, fuck you, Mormon. I mean, Ted Cruz is not John Connors. 
This is not the Terminator. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Wow. Raised yeah. from birth. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody knows that Glenn Beck is crazy. Uh, enough that he, he was too crazy for Fox News. That, that's, a, that's a level of crazy that few can attain, sir. The the only thing I found uh, really surprising from, from this, because uh, Right Wing Watch had the, the video of it. He doesn't have any charts that he's drawing. Wow. There's no conspiracy theories, no lines uh, uh, to connect he, bubbles. He loves his chalkboards and whiteboards. Yeah. Wow. Huh. He actually looks like he's uh, sitting in a mock oval office or something. <laughs> White shirt, black tie, golden curtains drawn back with a big window and some trees and a lawn behind him and a big leather chair behind a big oak desk. Yeah. With a really old phone. Yeah, that that sounds like um, every Mormon missionary, like, wet dream right there. It's a big power <laughs> fantasy. Mm-hmm. All right. Moving along. The uh, Mildred School Board in Omaha, Nebraska, had to, to vote to approve next year's school calendar. So the 2017 to 2018 school year. And Paul Meyer made a, a motion to rename winter break to Christmas break. Oh, no. Huh. This doesn't sound good. And he even said that atheists can crawl back into their hellhole. Oh, that guy. Yeah. Their hellhole. He said this in a school board meeting. Uh, nobody agreed with him. Uh, Paul Meyer, another, or excuse me, Mike Kennedy, another member of the board, said... I do know as a Catholic, I have no problem with it the way the calendar is. I celebrate Christmas. I know other people on this board do too. People are free to celebrate what they want to believe. I don't think anyone's trying to take Christmas away from any child. Mike Pates was quoted as saying, I too am tired of the political correctness that seems to be circulating in every part of our lives today. And you know what? I still say Merry Christmas. I still say Merry Christmas. If it offends people, I apologize for that. I'm not doing it to offend people, but I'm a Christian. No one seconded the motion and the calendar with winter break passed three to one. Awesome. Uh, he's a dick also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all. Oh, and not only is he a dick, Bye, but Felicia. he made the rest of the board have to come out and defend their, their religiosity. Right. It should have never come up in a public school board in the first place let alone in such a way that everybody else had to defend their faith. Ah, God damn. Mm -hmm. These fuckers. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. What a amazing specimen of, of human compassion. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, all right. So moving along to feedback, we got a right. comment from jaded Zappa. Great show. Great guest. Check out The Escape Artist with David Tennant if you want a dramatic mind bender. bender. Fucking A, I love Tennant. Okay. Um, from Travis McGee, updated my PayPal subscription. And uh, skipping down a little bit, um, I really enjoy you guys. Kind of feel like we're friends, even though we've never met in person. Uh, thanks, Travis. And he upgraded to, uh, I believe, the Dark Matter level. Holy shit. Our first ever Dark Matter supporter. My man. Travis, uh, yeah, seriously, I, I I know that I definitely wouldn't do this show as long as we have if, you know, people like you would, didn't say kind shit like that. Uh, oh, um, you know, no, not Dark Matter, Antimatter. I'm getting a little, a little freaklumped here. Yeah, he's uh, Antimatter. Holy fuck. Seriously, though. <laughs> uh, man, yeah. Uh, keep on writing and we'll, I'll keep on responding. So mm -hmm. and no matter where you're from, send pictures. God damn it. <laughs> uh, we got some pictures from, uh, Peter's in uh, Germany. Yes, we did. So thank you very much for that. And we oh, got shit. some more from Alf in uh, Thailand. Yeah. Alf's got an amazing view and Peter. Holy shit, dude. That's like a little fairy tale. Yeah. Dude, I want to visit. Can I sleep on your couch? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, to both. Fucking A. I would love to visit Thailand, and I would also love to visit Germany. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would love to visit any place that's not called Bremerton. <laughs> <laughs> you could always come to Boise. All right. Okay, maybe I do have limits. <laughs> <laughs> but, Peter, yeah, you can't uh, legally ship beer to us, but, uh, yeah, someday we will get over there. Or if you ever have a friend that's coming to the U.S., you know, just a thought. Bring it in their in their tote. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, I guess covers both feedback and supporters. Um, yeah, I, I again want to say thank you so much to all of our supporters. Um, I I was very happy to uh, that we were able to record some extra bonus content uh, in our our interview that we had last time. Uh, that was that was fun. And uh, hopefully we'll be doing more of that in the future. For sure. Fuck. I got nothing, but yeah, for sure. Please. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to get a hold of us, you can always email us at contact at atheistnomads.com. You can call us at 541-203-0666. We love getting voicemail and get very, very little. Um, <laughs> you can tweet us at Atheist Nomads. You can hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com slash Atheist Nomads. You can support us on PayPal, Patreon, um, patreon.com slash Atheist Nomads. Go to AtheistNomads.com. You can find the links to all of the contact and support methods on the sidebars. And uh, leave us reviews on iTunes. Oh, yeah. We are slipping. There's a thing called iTunes, and neither of us are Apple users. So, yeah, it'd be appreciated. That's the easiest way for tons of people to find us. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, please. (laughs) Yes. So anyway, we will be back next week with an interview. And That's then be a good one. hopefully a few days after that, uh, I will be seeing a whole bunch of you in Tacoma. Hell yeah. Let's get some beers going. Yeah. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find show notes and contact information at atheistnomads.com. Follow us on Twitter at Atheist Nomads and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Atheist Nomads. Please subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcatcher of choice. And while you're there, feel free to leave us a review. The music is courtesy of Sturdy Fred. Until next time, this has been the Atheist Nomads. And uh, Rocco wants to come say hello. Aww. Hi, Rocco. Did Rocco oh. bring you a beer? No. He brought Aww. me kisses. Yeah. Rocco, you're where the microphone goes. Aw, so cute. <laughs> okay, down. You need to uh, rig, rig him up with a harness that you can put beers in. <laughs> He's not that big. That'd be more Bucky. <laughs> Bucky could haul like a whole six pack. Hey. See, that's a useful thing. Corgi with a six-pack? Hell yeah.